Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel, so please share the show. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by Righteous Force, 10th Man, and Chocolate Sane in G+, together with a whole bunch of people in Discord, so welcome one and all. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Yo, yo, yo. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Any signs of physical earth curve edges formerly known as the geometric horizon? Not so Knoxville, Tennessee. You mean the one that boats used to disappear over? It's the one. One. Ah. Hashtag one horizon. <laughs> the one? Of... You sure that's not a trick question? <laughs> Just it's definitely hashtag one horizon. The only other assertion is either an imagined one drawn with 90 degrees to your zenith, an imaginary horizon, also called the sensible horizon, also called the true horizon, also called the... What's, is it? I can't I can never remember. The astronomical, there you go, I've got it in the end. The astronomical yeah. horizon. All of those are imaginary horizons used to derive second horizons, in the case of Al Biruni, which would be your geometric horizon, derived from your sensible horizon or true horizon. And then you've also got, yeah. technically speaking, a third horizon, which is the refracted geometric horizon. So you've got three hey. horizons. Go on, tenth man. They even say it's imaginary. Yeah. We've only got one horizon. Hashtag one horizon. Hey, Arwen, good to have you. Any signs of axial oh, rotation? No, 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 no. No. <laughs> that was good. Any signs? Well, the balls are spinning in place, though. They are spinning out at the moment. There's lots of pain and anger on the globe side. Hey ho! Party time here on the flat Earth side. Any scientific evidence of gravity? Nope. No. Supposedly, evidence of what? Supposedly, there's uh, gas particles that agree with us. That's already a straw man, you know. It's <laughs> impossible. You you can have a. Uh, scientific evidence of an effect it's over oh okay. i was referencing yeah you can what are you talking about at the carbon line that's oh. not gonna go that's not gonna fly what do you mean you can't have a scientific evidence of effect the whole point of science is to establish the cause of the effect that's the whole point of science so if you're just going to say well the effect standing alone well that would be a dependent variable but you can just definitely say, science that oh right i get what you mean right no yeah that was definitely incorrect See uh, Sleeping Warriors egg in salt water experiment. Moving on. Any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology, or astrophysics? Not after observing something, then they, they got to stop there. It, viable? Uh, well, there are plenty of hypotheses, but I don't know if there are any viable ones. Yeah, established IV-DV relationship, presumed cause of an effect. No, they don't have that in the pseudoscience fields of astronomy, cosmology, or astrophysics. You're absolutely right. Any evidence of a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth? Nope. Other, yeah. than, the, other than the cool cartoon that pops up on your, on your uh, screenshots? There's loads of those. 
follow soon. No Nathan's apprentice yeah. to say we only done down twelve K and we got it wrong with the P waves and S waves. He's clearly not here today. Any evidence of the R value? Earth radius. What's your yes, channel is right now discussing that. On, was that DJ Neo Shaman? Who is that in Discord? Sorry. No, I'm saying Poncho Pete is right now debating the R value mm -hmm. and how and how you got it completely wrong. They're not inventing it. Poncho Pete's what, on our what side. What R value? All right, hold on. Let me just get this straight. Poncho Pete, the flat earther, is debating the R value and what? Well, it started off with the fact that you won't stop asking your opening house question. Somehow went into the fact that the R value is not made up. They have a clear understanding. Someone brought up the horizon, the geometric horizon. And they shut up instantly. They, they start telling the person, you can't say geometric horizon when there's a flat earther around. They'll kill you. I thought that was I'm still unclear. I'm was Pete which side of the argument was Poncho Pete on? Oh, clearly that it's made up. I mean sorry, that that it's not made up. They they have clear evidence of the R. So a flat they earther can... was arguing that they have evidence of the R value. Of course they do. Yeah. Uh, you can see it every time you Stand, stand on the ocean. I, I don't need clarity of what the claim is. I need clarity of who's making it and why they're making it. So far, what we've got from you is that there's a flat earther out there who's stating the. No, I was the well flat earther. Mate, mate, we've got an audience, and I just need to make it clear what's going on. You're claiming a flat earther, Poncho Pete's, arguing in favour of a clearly defined R value. Is that what you're stating? Yeah. That makes no sense. Yeah, I know. That's why I left. Why is Poncho Pete arguing for the R value? Someone there. Sorry. This, this makes no sense. Maybe it wasn't Poncho Pete. Uh, sorry, not Poncho Pete. The guy who says the Himawari satellites are. Mixed. I thought I got him mixed up. Hey, buddy, help us out. Uh, anyway, right now on Poncho Pete's channel, there telling everybody how the R value is not made up. Poncho Pete's channel. You can clearly, but there is no geometric horizon. Sorry, Poncho Pete's channel deals in trans investigations. Now, it started off with it being Poncho Pete arguing for the R value. Now we've got a debate on Poncho Pete's channel. This None of this makes any sense, mate. Sorry, I, I messed up. It wasn't po I thought someone said that there was Poncho Pete there. But I was just sort of listening in, and then, and then I noticed your show started, so I took off. But they are debating the R value and that it's completely made up. Okay, so somewhere, somebody is debating the R value. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. On Poncho Pete's channel. Well, on Poncho, that maybe. Up. On maybe, maybe on Poncho maybe, Pete's channel. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's one of his subs called Cisco Kid. I, I don't know. Let's just move no. on. <laughs> any, ev <laughs> any evidence that you can have gas pressure without the necessary antecedent of a container? Well, on Poncho Peach Channel. Uh, <laughs> look, let's just draw close. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Party Poet 66. It's good to know, in all seriousness, they're debating the R value. Well, prior to this, they just assumed it and laughed at us when we told them how ludicrous it was to assume holograms when assuming a physical geometric sphere at horizon. Now they can't assume R. Well, what do you know? They're debating R. Well, that's because they need to. <laughs> that was funny, you, you forgot about optics, Nathan. What, our <laughs> argument that gets put in a column listed flurf excuses for Earth curve? That that optics. Flurf is back in style now, I guess. Never went out of fashion. The Earth was always... Obviously and observably flat, and it always will be. The fact that people are under the misapprehension they're on a sphere is neither in or there. So gas pressure without a container. Anybody? 
Obviously. Answers itself, doesn't it? You don't go buy a can of hairspray without the can. Oh, that's it then. That concludes the housekeeping. Excellent. Do I need to hustle a load of people off uh, mute in Discord, Righteous? Yes, I do. No, there's one guy that might need a mic check. Hold on, let me check. Oh, he took him off. He's good. I listened back to the pre-show from yesterday's show, Tenth Man. Just, I think I don't, I don't know if it's just because it's so you know laid back when we're doing the pre-show, but that that summary of the, I think I'm going to trim it out and call it something like, um, three uh, three steps to debunking the sphere or something like that, because it was really concise. You know, I even surprised myself when I listened to it back. Yeah, no, that's why Neil. And myself at the same time said, oh, you got to cut that out. That was just so tight the way you did it. It was, you were in your groove. You found your groove there on those three that yesterday, Marty. Yeah, I'll trim it out. I mean, it's, it's available for members. If you're an Nathan Oakley, I've changed my schedules here, there and everywhere. And now I'm back to the original schedule that I started with, albeit with uh, one addition, which is that the uncut and after shows go out now immediately after, or as soon as, you know, uploading and, processing allows uh, immediately after the live show finishes so if you're an Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member you can currently see uh, one i.e. yesterday's uncut and after show now uh, and then it will be published later on this evening so yeah so they go out with a day delay so yesterday's show goes out on my second channel tonight so the show we're discussing nobody's seen yet unless you remember and then you probably may or may not have seen it but you can see it if you want to if you remember now um, and like I say it will get released on the tonight and so on and so forth but nevertheless it's it's uh, useful to know if you remember you can actually watch it now but anybody else watch it tomorrow or watch it tonight Robert, my bad on Nathan Oakley channel Got to think, yeah it's worth, it's worth it it's worth a separate cut out and title and you'll come up with a good title for it but something along those lines I think is good I will do. The, the trimmed out clips are coming thick and fast because as time progresses, the the more concise the debunkings of each of the arguments come and the, the, the way each thing is going to get phrased sort of encompasses the debunking that might come your way. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, I use, I use the top three all the time now. Um, and I was with a fellow flat earther the other day and I said, here, let me give you the top three. And I just rolled through it. Not as good as you do, but it came out good enough. <laughs> he loved it. Did, did you do the singing too? Da, 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 da. <laughs> no, it just, it just uh. developed in conversation off the back of the, the previous show. So we were just discussing, I can't remember which aspect of it. I think it was gravity. And we're saying, oh, this doesn't even make the top three. You know, if you're going to debunk the globe, it's really easy. You debunk the Earth as a sphere with a black swan, essentially debunking the R value, which debunks all observations of a celestial nature. And if that's not satisfactory to debunk everything, in other words, you could just stop there with the black swan. That's good enough to basically annihilate the entire heliocentric religion. You can move on to gas pressure without a container, the sky not being a vacuum. And... For those who actually still assert that we're not geocentric, we you know we've still got um, us spinning, then you can assert that you can't have the Coriolis deviation required to prove that we're spinning, and asserted by gyros and pendulums. So it sort of started off in reverse order with saying, well, 15 degrees an hour end statement is what you get told proves the Earth spins, but it's what 15 degrees an hour of what? Well, the Earth rotating underneath an inertial reference frame proves the Earth spins according to heliocentrists. Well, if the Earth turns underneath, then planes will have shortened, re you know, reduced flight times when travelling west. So that's where it began, and it sort of evolved into a very concise summary of all three um, globe debunkings, and it became almost like a, you know, three steps to debunking a globe, basically, how you can annihilate it in every single respect. It's not spinning, it's not in space, it's not a sphere, game over globe. The only addition to that was to say that trademark, copyright, Quantum Eraser 2016, Spinning Ball Space Monkey Religion is entirely debunked with all of those top three. 
with the exception of being a space monkey, i.e. you're not debunking the ridiculous notion that we descended from a completely different animal. I'm going to uh, send you some star trail photography, Nathan. Uh, I'm going to get my uh, a card adapter so I could take it from my P900. And I just took some, and they're gorgeous. They came out great. Excellent. Excellent. Just get a P900 something? Oh, no. I, I got it first month I was investigating flat earth but uh, bev told me how to do the star trail photography a while back ago and so on some Ooh. clear nights i've been you know putting it out anybody catch the moon this morning fucking gorgeous part of my language right we're 15 20 minutes in now But no, I didn't. Sorry. Yeah, she was a sexy girl this morning. <laughs> I Sometimes the moon catches me. Like, uh, like I, I turn the corner. I didn't see it. It was when I left the house. It was still dark. But when I turned the corner, it was just big, bright, just, just incredible. Whatever the hell that thing is, <laughs> it's a. Definitely something incredible up there. Yeah, Darwin we had tree. a bright moon here over over here too. Thank you, Darwin. We had a very bright moon over here as well. Yeah, with a clear night sky. The yeah. It is almost like there's this street light, this very heavy street light just hanging in there. It's odd how that works. Yeah, the amount of times I've been sort of jaw on the floor watching the moon at my local supermarket up the road just because it happens to have a good position to watch the moon rise. And I'm there in stunned amazement because it is, you know, awe-inspiring. And people will be walking past looking at me with a strange look. And occasionally, or this is back back in the day before we weren't allowed to go in and near each other, I'd point at it and go, look at that. As in, is that cool? And people wouldn't even bat an eyelid. Yeah, they'll look at it. What are you looking at? <laughs> Wait, uh, the moon? Yeah, yeah, so, it's the moon. My last oh, okay. job, when I was delivering, <laughs> I was delivering groceries in my last job, and I worked at night, so it was often really dark, and I don't know what, which, bring him in. So I'm just talking to my wife. Um, I'd show the customers, so I'd bring them out of their house, and I'd say, look at that, you know, there's Jupiter. And again, they wouldn't bat an eyelid. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny, it won't bat an eyelid until you tell them, you know, that's supposed to be a gas planet, which is not possible because it's a vacuum, right? Then all of a sudden, they'll, they'll they'll try to pay attention and tell you how that that's not what you said is wrong, even though they didn't care two minutes ago. <laughs> you find that? Yeah. It, hmm, that, that makes me wonder, you know, in a way, if, if Jupiter is supposed to be this giant ball of gas, then... And it has more gravity, presupposedly, you know, whatever that means these days, than Earth. Like, how does all that gas together create more gravity than the solid Earth? Like, how? Yeah, I know it's how does it work, right? But it's like, how did they come up with that? I, I, I don't get it. How can gas... How can it just all be gas and then have more gravity over there and, and just be gas? It's, it's weird. Well, when the ballers make up their cosmology and then we start asking questions, uh, it starts to fall apart real quick. But somehow you also have Saturn, right? Which is supposed to be another gas giant. And somehow that planet can 
can acquire rings that are made of what ice and dust and all these other particles. So now you got gas tracking mass. What? <laughs> How does that work? Usually it's the other way around. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, go. I mean, you, when you're in Narnia, you could just flip it and bounce it however you want. Whatever makes sense, makes sense. I was just about to say that's the perfect lead. I was just waiting for an entry point to say exactly what I was about to say. They're done out of necessity. Why would it need to do that? Where have they got that from? Was sort of Alwyn's starting opening question. Well, they're all done out of necessity. They start, if you backtrack through these arguments, with the first layer, what I used to call the heliocentric smear of bullshit. Well, you know, each and every one of these nonsense assertions, gravity included, are done out of necessity. Of course, of course. And with the ring of Saturn, it's very blatantly obvious why they conjured up such a weird little thing there. It's because it's kind of in the visual, and that's how it was decided to interpret that visual. You know, it's some kind of apparent ring around this central disk thing. Always in the same orientation, by the way. So, yeah, is it really a ring or is it more like an eye? You know, it all depends on how you're going to look at it. But that's the reason why they put those rings around there. Now, why they chose for Saturn to be gas, just like Jupiter, I don't know. The, yeah, does it have like cloud, ac apparent cloud like activity, or just like sunspots happen on the sun and all that? It's interesting how they assume to know what's out there and they don't know what they can't go to the center of the earth to find that molten iron core. Right. Right, I'm going to dig out a link for a channel that I want you all to go subscribe to if you're watching this live. So Take Back Space TV, which is Chris D's channel. He does 4K broadcasts with his telescope linked up to a Sony camera. And just broadcast it on YouTube live. You can even ask him in his chat to go and look at specific things. But if you want to actually see what this stuff looks like, as good as you get out of a telescope, subscribe to Take Back Space TV. I'll go and dig out a link if you guys can talk amongst yourselves for a bit. Hey, Chocolate. How are you doing? <laughs> good, man. Hanging in there. Still yeah, breathing. The moon, the moon <laughs> so, was, that's good. The moon, Moon was so bright last night when I was doing the Star Trail photography that I had a, I can't even aim the P900 towards it. There was just too much light. It, and normally when it's dark, I got to watch where I'm stepping. And it's like, it's like someone you could see everything last night. Yeah, it's, it's insane how bright it can lighten things up when it's dark enough. Yeah, it's like, how are you going to tell me that that's not a light? <laughs> how are you going to tell me that? That's, that's being reflected right now from some giant ball of gas that's on the other side of this supposed planet. Like, come on. It's just nonsense. But for the audience's benefit now, I've just got a random clip from Take Back Space TV in a moment. I'll share the link, but just so you can get an idea of what it's showing. ATF man. Yeah. Hey, I got my star, uh, not a star, but my uh, time lapse camera out. I've been headed out all day yesterday and uh, all all day tonight. And when I get back home, I'll share it to you. It's Red Man. All right. Yeah, good job, Red Man. Yeah, I was up every two and a half hours. I took four different star trails last night. Hard to fall asleep when you're waking up every two and a half hours to go hit the next segment. Yeah, sometimes it's easier with this camera. I got to get me a better one. What kind of camera you got? It's called a Bruno uh, 200. Uh, it, it takes the time lapse itself, and yet you don't have to compose the video automatically composes it for you so it's pretty cool you just set it and forget it you set it for what uh what 48 days don't even have the uh uh what is it four aa batteries pretty cool oh so it's uh it goes for a longer time than the p900 for sure then 
of a four AA batteries. Cool to go. Let's set it nice. and forget it. So how many days all together before the batteries run out? You f yeah, you just set it and just let it go. Uh, I haven't had to change the batteries yet, and they're still full. And I've been, up, you know, uh, what, 20 days in, just shooting, shooting stuff. And it's got so day Send and night, all together, looped all together, or is that what you're saying? You must be on the road. This video is brought to you by Dixon's Electronics for all your camera needs. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Hawkins, uh, where's that geometric horizon of yours before you start ragging on the P900? At best, we've debunked the R value, that's all. That's it. I'm going to do a quick shout out to DJ Neo Sharman. He says, hashtag Black Swan for the win. You guys are awesome, Nathan. Thank you very much indeed for the support, DJ Neo Sharman. Yeah, Black Swan was a knockout punch for sure. Punch drunk when they come in here to debate. I'd like a Glober to tell us why, if this argument is so insignificant, why it has completely changed your arguments into our arguments. That's all I want to know. According to Rumpus, we to just know. caught up. He's been telling us all yeah, along. I, oh, he's been telling us all along. He's been perspective. <laughs> Really? That's weird because I remember being on this panel hearing numerous and numerous times how things were being physically blocked. I remember that. Yep. I got a pretty good memory. <laughs> You're not going to deny on mine. Wipe that for me. <laughs> so some insignificant argument made you completely go back to the drawing board. And now tell us that we don't see a geometric horizon. We've so, never seen it, and we can never see it. So the guy that says, we do, we do, we do. We don't, we don't, we don't. <laughs> he's saying he's always said something. <laughs> that's him, that's him, that's him. I did, I did, I did. <laughs> oh. If you understood geometry. You guys just don't understand. But a straight or a curved line is straight. Don't you guys get this? <laughs> if you understood <laughs> geometry. They're in a mess. Yeah, they're in a big mess. I, I was thinking about that today. They are in a big mess. They don't have to be, though. They, they're only in a big mess because they choose to be. They, they could actually just say, they could step back and look at it and say, hey, uh, this doesn't make sense. Uh, <laughs> no, they won't ever do that. You, you guys want to see how I get things done do around here? Oh, look at Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you an honest question. Way. Can you actually see Rumpus turning around and saying, you know what? You're so right. I don't see it. Never ever. There's no way he would confess that. Or Zanuck. Yeah, we're both, both in the same boat. Both babies sat on us, Paul. <laughs> What did you say, uh, Nathan? Both in the same boat. Oh, you're in the same boat as I am? I just put my camera on for my audience. Just by pure coincidence, I happened to have a baby sat on me when you said, like, look at how I cope with things, baby strapped to me. Oh, 
or baby moments. Yeah, yeah little, Jesse won't let you put her down for more than about 10 minutes. So I discovered this a few days ago. Sorry. I might be in that same boat too. My wife will kill me for revealing this, but she's late. Oh, oh shit. Don't, don't worry, we, we won't tell her you told us. Your secret is safe. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't listen to the replay later. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Oh, we'll see. Neil. Yes. That's no, sorry, I just came back. I saw you were talking. Been smashing it recently, Arwen. Who? Me? Yeah. Didn't do really, really well. So. Harm in your rebuttals to people. Oh, right. In the chat. Yeah, there were a lot of uh, the chat nagging, especially the latter part of the show today. Oof. I thought wind. Arwen was tremendous yesterday when he s set that verbal trap. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, yesterday was interesting. Definitely was. That's kind of what I was referring to. Right. Arwen is ace. Yeah, it, 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 there's been twice now. I'm waiting for a third occasion of what it was, but I'm going to mention it now. Where people have said words to the effect of that's a rubbish explanation when it's been exceptionally good from you really clear concise not long and then people are like uh, that doesn't explain anything and you're like what the hell man is it just when someone gives a really good rebuttal and a really clear concise explanation for something they need demeaning because that's all they seem to do or they've done it twice to you so far in the last week yeah well i'm getting used to that so we well, shouldn't tell them to sod off no i'm right you're wrong Well, I'd like the explanation to be the evidence of that I'm wrong and just leave it to that, you know? If I'm going to follow it up with ah, rah, 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 in some way, getting more personal, I think that that would actually then detract from the value of the explanation given. Maybe you're right. But, uh, but My own audience. I'm just saying it shouldn't be left out there when the rebuttal is, no, Owen hasn't done a very good job of explaining it. And there was a dude on the Discord panel as well that was like, no, that was an excellent explanation. A five-year-old could understand that. You know, I can't remember who it was to give him credit, but he was absolutely right. And I backed him up. I'm like, yeah, why is it that it's immediately moved to demean the person with their really concise argument? Because it was concise in the opposite direction of where it needed to be concise. <laughs> right. It needed to be concise to for their yeah. point, not Owen's point. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was not open-ended enough for them to insert gravity in there again. Because the Arwen line destroyed their Carmen line. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Hey, Brian. Hey, Nathan. Hey, everyone. Huh? Very well. Hey, Brian. You good? Anybody in Discord know why people believe that they live on a magical spinning ball in a vacuum? I was just going to say, make sure nobody tells Brian to shut up or be quiet. That was actually the same guy. The guy that was like a five-year-old could understand this. was like, shut up, Brian. Spurs is talking. <laughs> and rightly so, Brian's like, how dare you? <laughs> Who is that guy? He's obviously good for generating conversation. Brian said, I'm fuming over here. <laughs> oh, yeah. I hate when someone just blatantly tells it, just, like, just be quiet. Okay, if Nathan or someone else on the panel tells me, okay. But some random uh, sound or voice from Discord could be some baller telling you what to do. And uh, the ballers are giving me hassle at the moment because they say that I won't leave anyone talk because I won't leave flat, fight the flat out talk. Because he talks a lot of nonsense and he misrepresents it. So they give me a bit of acid in comments and stuff about that. So I, I instantly thought it was a border just telling me to shut up because it would have monster tell me to shut up. 
Yeah, I think I think often you get sort of sideline people who want to you know produce the show and run the direction that it was going. And Spurs was on a roll to his credit, but this, this, so what? <laughs> you know, he didn't tell you to shut up. <laughs> That's not on. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, don't know, I, think I, I Sorry, Ned, go on, go on. No, no, I was going to say, can't you go on their channel for a debate and then they tell you shut up. Well, the, what's the debate about <laughs> if I can't talk? <laughs> yeah, but see, what they want is for you to sit there and listen to whatever they're going to tell you and put up with being misrepresented and them insulting you. If they weren't misrepresenting you and insulting you, it would be easier to sit there and leave them get out that point and then argue back with them. But if someone keeps on trying to put words in your mouth and make it out that you're saying something or not, you know, you have to, you have no choice because what basically what they're doing then is within the debate, they're trying to make it look like you're making an argument you're not and all their stupid followers will just go along with this because they need it. They all need this. They need to misrepresent you. That's what they need because they can't beat you on, on points. You know, they can't beat you on reality. So they need to mis misrepresent you and make it seem like you don't know what you're talking about, or you're saying something you're not saying. So they're trying to give you a, a, a pin and argument here you didn't make. You know, this kind of thing. And if you don't pipe up, then, you know, they're going to label you with this. You'll be getting it in comments. And here you go, you're going to be hearing about this thing that you supposedly said and agreed to, that you didn't say and agreed to. And this is what they do. Because they have to, they're desperate. You know, and it's like, so it's like, why leave, so why leave them talk? Why leave them to someone do that? You know? Yeah, right on. Interrupt when they misrepresent you. Quick shout out to Cleary. So space time is a fabrication. Thank you very much indeed for your super chat, Cleary. See what you did there. Very clever. Yeah, we'll fabricate Happy. some emperor's clothes with that space time. The fabric, don't you know? That's a good one. How come Ted didn't think of that one? Because uh, I'm in stitches right now. Boom, boom! <laughs> There's no ballers in the Discord. Don't ruin it. It's the calm before the storm. I know it's always this way. Then it gets real quiet. Then maybe we should talk more about space balls because that sparked the hell of a conversation last week. Any any, <laughs> any Hollywood blockbuster? Although I don't know if you call space balls a blockbuster, but you know, let's, if we talk about Back to the Future, Star Wars, space balls, anything like that, that tends to trigger fundies into thinking that we're all moronic film critics. And therefore, wouldn't know the first thing about heliocentrism. Okay, so let's pick uh, the Star Trek. I was never a Trekkie. I am. I can't watch them the same anymore. Me neither. I, 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 I was heartbroken. I found out about Flat Earth after filling about. 10 terabytes of hard drives with about two or 3,000 DVDs and Blu-rays that I owned. Big film buff. And then suddenly 90% of it became complete garbage on the spot. Nah. <laughs> it's just fantasy. So, uh, hold on. Correct. Hold on. Just, <laughs> yeah, that's correct. It is fantasy. But this is something I studied in college. The suspension of disbelief. There's only so far you can suspend disbelief. And if the fundamental premise of a sci-fi movie based around heliocentric beliefs is the basis of the movie, I can't suspend dis disbelief that far anymore. Therefore, it's unwatchable. Man, that's a bummer. Because I yeah, don't have is. that problem at all anymore. Yeah, I remember talking to uh, Insanity is Sanity about it, and he'd just gone and bought Battlefront or something, a Star Wars game. He's like, yeah, I can still enjoy Battlefront. I'm still into the game. I'm like, well, I can't do it anymore. You know, I, I can't go back and watch this nonsense because I, I, it just doesn't, I can't get into the, the plot of the movie because I can't suspend disbelief enough to believe the concept of a sky vacuum that they're all flying around in.
Right, it will make you kind of wonder if you're sitting in this supposed spaceship and you see it, and then you rocket boost and you're like, hold on, that doesn't actually work. <laughs> you can't push in a vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing does pop into my head every now and then that I see that kind of thing. You know, uh, sci-fi movies, um, uh, The Predator, is the only movie that still has something, although they came from space. Um, there's stories out there of people supposedly seeing uh, predator-like things in the, in the forest, the mountains in the US. Uh, hunters and that have come forward saying they're seeing uh, things that look like they're in a saran wrap kind of thing, where they're kind of cloaked. Uh, so... The Predator might be out there. <laughs> yes, I, don't predator, know I, I can watch Predator. I do. Oh, hold on. I think that those could definitely be big feet. Hang on. I like the Saran Wrap Predator story. Keep going, bro. I can't wait to get to Yeah, th th this is the story. There's, I don't know if you ever heard of a man called David Polides. Have you ever heard of him? Any of on the panel? Uh, rings a bell. Um, yeah. He, he's been uh, investigating mysterious disappear disappearances for several years now. Uh, things that have uh, makes no sense kind of stuff. And one of the stories he got, although it wasn't about a disappearance, he, he just uh, detailed it in his book uh, and he, de he put it into a, a documentary that came out a while back. It's about this lady uh, who was in a deer stand, um, lives in, living in a small town, on the edge of a small town. Um, I'm not sure what part of the U.S. It was somewhere, it could have been down the, the, the Midwest or somewhere like that. But uh, she was in a deer stand and she had a phone, like one of those old Motorola's or something like that, the flip phone. And she saw something in the trees. And she got her phone out and took a photo of it. And it looked like, you remember the, the predator when, it, when it's, he's, he's all um, cloaked? It looked like that. That's what she said it looked like. And the photo looks like that. She couldn't get all of them to think in the photo. But the photo looks really strange. But her husband works with, uh, knew a bit about photo editing and all this kind of stuff. Not photo editing, but uh, yeah, about all that kind of thing. So he sent the phone to the company that made it. I don't know if it was Motorola or whoever at the time. Uh, and the company said there's no way that that phone definitely took this photograph but there's no way that that phone will be capable of taking the photograph. So it's a bit of a mystery. Whereas a phone took a photograph that it supposedly wouldn't have been able to take because it didn't have the capability. But the photograph was definitely taken by this phone. And there's other stories of people coming forward saying the same, the same thing, same thing, hunters out of the woods, saying, saying they, they felt uneasy and suddenly they saw something up in the trees that was like cloaked. It was moving, but they couldn't see what it was. So... Maybe Predator. You can still watch Predator. <laughs> that might be there. <laughs> but yes, I, I, I like how you brought that back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's the problem. Minute Nate can't watch any sci-fi, <laughs> and he used to like it. Yeah, I can actually suspend disbelief with Predator because. There's, other than there being a spaceship, right, which they don't actually show land in the first one, there's no there's no requirement to believe that that alien hasn't come from the horizon as opposed to the sky vacuum, right? So it could be from extra terra firma, for all I know. You know, in other words, the location isn't crucial to the story, so it doesn't it doesn't hinge around heliocentricity other than the fact that it's an alien. And in our general paradigm, if you're a Westerner, you would believe that aliens come from the sky vacuum, but you know, in I can't remember which movie to say which one it was recently. My wife stuck it on Netflix, and there's literally the opening of the movie is a spaceship coming from the sky vacuum and landing, and immediately I'm like, oh, I can't. And she's like, no, no, just pretend it's. And it's like, yeah, but you're having to tell me how to suspend disbelief from this point on, and I can't do it. Whereas with Predator, it just opens with them, you know, having a gun battle with some terrorists or whatever they are, you know, mercenaries or something. That they've got hostages for but you know the the plot isn't isn't intrinsic around the being a sky vacuum is it no but That's i will until, say that until you get to the sequels though yeah i, I said that, that i did I, I, did, I did paraphrase that i did say 
in the first one. I did say that. I know, I know, I, I know you did, but I, I can't do it just because I know, I've seen the sequels. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so I know where these things come from. Well, exactly. I've, I, I, I used to watch the Danny Glover one, and to many extents, aside from the sort of the rasters toking, I thought it was a you know a, almost as good a movie. Um, but I haven't watched it since, not since Flat Earth, where I've watched the original Predator since and enjoyed it. The only, the only part of space is in the original Predator is at the very, very start, where they show something supposedly flying towards planet Earth. I, I knew you were going to uh, bring space. that up. Look, look, let's just forget Sorry. about the bit where they actually show space in the first movie in the opening sequence, because that completely <laughs> ruins my argument. <laughs> Sorry. It's during the it's during the title sequence that doesn't count. Well, yeah, I, 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 yeah, but... well, well, I don't know that. Oh uh, no, I was going to say the the I was <laughs> just when you called it Saran Wrap Predators, I was thinking that was a bit of a stretch, but the audience would be left clinging. Bit of a stretch, clinging. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 It could be that we've got a full Discord panel, so there's no there's no fundies in there. Well, it's almost time for our show, anyways. Well, if you can, boot, a... yeah, hold on. After after that little injection of energy in terms of talking nonsense about a movie for a while, it's worth kicking out a couple of people who haven't spoken yet, just to see if we can get somebody who's like. Again, it's not going to quite work, this magic trick, if I say. The whole point of this is because we've just talked nonsense about movies to create the impression that we're not going to have a clue about anything else. But there we go. I've had to mention it, but if you can kick a couple people out, uh, right, just, just temporarily see if we can get it back right, well, the end of the live show. First, I'll ask if anybody wants to volunteer to leave. They're not going to be talking. There you go. I think a gap, at least one gap's opened up, so... You want to de debate the shape of the xenomorph or whatever they call it in the Predator movies? Move is it just called the Predator? Yeah, I think so. They don't. They don't really call him. Do they really call him that in the movie? The xenomorph is from Aliens, not yeah, from Predator. Yeah, the xenomorph is Alien. Yeah. yeah, I know, but by equivalency, what's what's the Predator called? It's, has it got a, a a species, an arbitrary assigned categorization? <laughs> Uh, not memorable. really, because I don't think they ever got down to the origins of where it came from in the movies. Because they never spoke. Right? So it's hard to find backstory for something that doesn't speak or communicate in our language. That's not true. Right? It said any time. Huh? It said any time. It also said behind you. There's another one oh, as well. Oh, when it was copying, but it was just it was just mimicking what it heard. It That's wasn't what it said. actually. Speaking. It, it also <laughs> said it also said turn around. Turn around. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Predator's an excellent movie. First time I watched Predator was on a uh, Sega Game Gear with a TV tuner for a cartridge with the most horrendous picture on about a four inch screen and it was broadcast on very heavily censored on British television that was my first ever time watching it on a Game Gear remember the Game Gear? yeah yep well, I was a very lucky and boy because I had a Game Gear with a TV tuner <laughs> that, that was big money <laughs> yeah <laughs> man I was big, when big. I got that for Christmas I couldn't quite believe my luck it was about 80 quid and it was in the 90s Big well, maybe in the eighties. Orange it... man. If this doesn't encourage a fundy to debate us. I don't know what will. <laughs> He's the angriest gamer you've ever heard. <laughs> Almost sounded like Pinball Wizard. That's the angry video game nerd. God, it is really quiet. Thin on the ground. Flat Earth debate today. We're talking about 
video game tuner cards for the Sega Game Gear. My God, what's happened? Black Swan. Ah, oh, that's that yeah. reminds me. I was that's supposed to arrange. Happened. I was supposed to arrange a. Although Quantum Race has lost his internet connection through storms, um, maybe when I get back in touch with him, I will arrange for it. Hopefully this week, sometime to do a, a show with him and Sleeping Warrior about the Black Swan specifically. Now that the ang- the arguments come back. Brief hiatus because of COVID nineteen. Yeah, COVID nineteen can't kill the black swan. It 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 was a death blow, and they tried. They came back. They tried and they tried, and then, Mister Sensible, well, the best you've done. <laughs> that was epic. This is amazing. They'll say stuff like that, not realizing how much the radius would change at 10 miles before saying stuff like that. Stop it. Nathan's withholding measurements from He's yeah. withholding measurements. They, they want us to argue about how much bigger the Earth would get if we actually calculated the R value out based on their mathematics for the black swan imagery. You got something you want to present, Righteous? Yeah, I just seen somebody post this in uh, Discord, I think. I was like, okay, this is pretty interesting. <laughs> out says, of, this, out world, of this world, Tom Cruise plots movie to shoot in space. Fake place. With Elon Musk SpaceX. No, it's all a big lie. Space is fake. Can't have gas pressure without a container. If the sky was a vacuum, the gas we're breathing would fill the space. So definitely not. Tom Cruise is definitely not going to be filming in space with Elon Musk. That's a complete lie. Well, it better be a better representation than that convertible car that they put out there. No, it's Tom Cruise, so somehow he'll get a, a motorcycle out there. And uh, oh, it'll work. It'll work. That car. You, you never he'll seen a Mission Impossible? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what we're waiting for. We're waiting to hear them say, "Yes, and Tom did his own stunts in space." <laughs> that's what they'll say too. <laughs> Apparently, the guy learns to fly helicopters and you know hangs outside of aircraft while they're flying. <laughs> so why not? Why not go to a place that you can't breathe and that can't exist? Yes, he did actually do that. No, no worry about that. He did actually hang on to that 747 wing uh, after it was hijacked. That's correct. He did do that stunt. I I do give him props, man. He does a lot of crazy stunts for an actor (laughs) that not too many people other than like Jackie Chan and somebody would do. So I give him props for that. Yeah, but you're not reading between the lines. What's happening is the crew's (laughs) going, my God, this guy's irritating. Yeah, jump on that horse, Tom. Snap, broken arm. <laughs> they all sat back going, yeah. <laughs> Anybody can do it, Tom can do it. <laughs> I'm just Was- wondering uh, what they're going to conjure up, you know? That, he can't do the harder stunts. He only does the plain stunts. The plane stunts. That was terrible. That was boom, boom. Come on, man. Nah, that was not even a half a boom. <laughs> what? Not even a half of chocolate. My, my wingman. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was my boom, boom. <laughs> uh, I called it. Mm-hmm. You just role played. <laughs> Oh, gosh. The ball is dead. The ball is dead. Ding dong, the ball is dead. That'll get him here. Your ball is dead, ballers. That's why you're not here. I challenge you. Can make it mouth to mouth to your ball. Mr. Sean Hawkins, who's in the chat every day, day, all day. (laughs) What's up, man? Why don't you just hop in here and talk to us? What's going on? I don't get it. You're in here. So you ain't doing anything. He I'll slammed the P900 earlier. What did the P900 ever do to him? Uh, he destroyed his ball. Destroyed his ball. Oh. He 
He's ad humming a camera. I had a couple of member comments on one of the unpublished videos. Either go out on Saturday or something along those lines. And one of the one of my members was saying it's comical watching Rumpus and Sean Hawkins spam your chat with their venom and hatred and general pain sharing. General pain sharing. <laughs> Uh, you think it? I mean, it has to be somewhat painful, right? Cause they're, they're, uh, as we're sitting in here, you know, laughing, talking about Predator, destroying this globe model, they're sitting, they're in the chat, spitting all of their venom. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's like it has to be painful for them. They must get irritated every time one of us laughs or something. I'm sure, definitely me because I laugh a lot. <laughs> because I like laughing at your ridiculous model. Yes, I enjoy it. Well, they're very eager to try and find a way through. They're like little insects trying to bite a way through our skin. While we're, and then when we uh, express joy, they're taking that as a sign as, oh, we might potentially be weakened for a second. It's all very instinctive at this point when you're that obsessed. So they're like little insects, like little bugs just crawling all over the place in the chat, just trying to find some kind of weakness, some way to, to gnaw their way through. Uh, it's not working. Swan, the black swan it, is the raid. We, we've, left, we, we've placed the, the, the black swan like raid all over the place so they can't crawl in. <laughs> You're going to die. Right. <laughs> raid. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, good times. And with that, I'm going to say a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you who tuned in live on the Nathan Oakley 1980 stream for hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. If you are watching this on the Nathan Oakley primary stream, then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!